Day 60, we're officially two thirds of the way through the official schedule, although because we passed the budget so quickly, there's talk that we'll be able to get out of here a few days early. If that's not an incentive to get through these bills, I don't know what is. So the yesterday and today have been kind of weird days because we can't hold any hearings on bills unless they are properly noticed because they're public hearings. And so since we had scheduled two days for the budget, it's not like because we passed the budget early, we can just um, start having bill hearings. Um, but we're here to work and we have all of these bills um, that we could do on second reading. So. We've been going to our committee meetings just to do executive action, which is voting yes or no on the bills that we've already heard. And we've been meeting on the House um, the house floor so that we can do second and third reading. So this morning in Business and Labor, we took executive action um, on a bill that redefines misconduct. And I was really pleased that two Republicans actually voted the correct way on it. Um, I talked about this bill the other day. It's a ridiculous attack on workers' rights. Um, we also did, we also passed, well, I voted against it, but of course it still passed, a bill um, redefining when employers have to pay unemployment benefits. And um, so we heard twice in testimony that this bill would make it so that an employer could reduce their workers wages or hours um, drastically and the worker may then be eligible for unemployment but the benefits would not be charged to the employer's account what would happen is if the employee was eligible for unemployment benefits as a result of getting their wages or hours cut dramatically, the cost of those benefits to the employee would actually be socialized and spread out to all of the other employers, all of the other business owners who are in the pool. And even though we heard that in committee when we heard the bill, and then today again during executive action, the department was there and answered the question and said, yes, this is true. This is really what this bill does. Every single Republican still voted for it. I was really surprised. That's such a bad vote. Um, it's bad for business, really. What business owner wants to pay, what good rule-abiding business owner wants to pay for the unemployment benefits of other business owners? I was just so surprised. Um, and then we also passed the bill that gives the Board of Public Accountants complete autonomy, like makes them their own branch of government. It's ridiculous. So we had two floor sessions this morning, one at 10 a.m., and there were 12 non-controversial bills on second reading, and there were 11 bills on third reading. House Bill 2, the budget bill from yesterday, was on third reading today, and we actually kind of had a pool going to, to um, guess how many no votes, because we thought surely none of these people are going to, or not all of these people are going to vote yes again today. Um, there are people who have voted 99 to 1 and been the no vote on like veterans benefits or um, protecting child abuse victims, like just really no brainer votes. And they, they're still the one no vote. But so it really was a miracle today when House Bill 2, the budget bill, passed unanimously on third reading. It was kind of exciting. And then at 1 p.m., again, we had another floor meeting. There were 14 bills on second and no third reading. The bills were a little bit more controversial. There was one bill um, that talked about state leased cabin sites and one bill that talked about renewable energy requirements and one bill that would create a special tax classification for new generating and fuel facilities. Um, we passed a great bill um, that would allow you to have the word veteran printed on your state issued ID if you are a veteran and you would like it to say so. Um, so that was a good bill. Back to business as normal tomorrow, as usual tomorrow, we have um, committee meetings, bills scheduled, the Medicaid expansion bills, there are two of them, they are both up Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Um, they're both being heard in House Human Services, and so we're getting tons of email, but if you're watching from a part of the state and you have a Republican representative, um, you should call or email your Republican representatives and tell them that that why you think that we should have Medicaid expansion, healthcare for all, whatever you want to call it, in the state of Montana. Um, we don't have a physician shortage.
uh, it does create jobs. Um, it is paid for, not by us. It is paid for for us. It is our tax dollars that are paying for it. And so by not doing it, our tax dollars go to other states with Republican majorities and Republican governors who realize that this makes not only great social sense, but also great business sense. So, um, yep, you've got until Friday and then maybe until Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday before they vote to start messaging to your representatives about Medicaid expansion. See you tomorrow.